As traders, we're always looking for ways to trade the markets, different ways to engage with the statistical data that we are given. Technical analysis is one way, of course, but comparing one market to another connects dots between two areas of the market that many don't seem to consider are indeed connected. These are correlations. When one market goes in one direction, sometimes other markets go in either the same direction or in equal and opposite directions. And picking out those trades can be key for us to navigate our way through these markets. Well, we're joined now uh, by one seasoned trader that we regularly speak to here at IGTV, and that is Serge Berger from thesteadytrader.com. Serge, welcome. Uh, we, we normally speak every every month to talk about market moves and so forth. And uh, when we last spoke at the beginning of the year, we started to talk about some of these correlations that keep popping up. So we thought we'd do this uh, this uh, uh, educational um, interview, if you like, uh, on how to identify these correlations. First of all, explain more about these and how they help us as traders. Sure. Uh, well, thanks, Jeremy. I think this is a this is a great topic. You know what we find when we talk to clients, um, and that can be retail clients and even on the institutional side. Um, sometimes the correlation factors tend to be a little bit um, either ignored or just not considered. Uh, enough where lots of focus tends to be on moving averages and you know drawing annotations on charts and lines but really when we think about it you know lots of asset classes are driven by movement in other asset classes and um i thought we could start off with maybe the first example here if that's okay with you jeremy and just kind of look at what i think is one of the more uh, pronounced examples of of, of a of an asset class that t that tends to kind of be, you know, the one that moves the tail of of all of many others, and that's essentially the U.S. dollar. And that U.S. dollar we know is the trading currency around the world in terms of global trade. I mean, so equities bottomed in October, and the dollar topped. And why does that happen? Well, it happens because as as the equity market as the dollar starts to come off, that inverse correlation we've seen from dollar dollar tightness over the past. 12 months or so started to ease off and equity started to bounce. So that correlation between the dollar and risk assets is actually one of the more pronounced correlations out there. Now, the reason why this is important is because if we can, if we use, let's say a moving average and look at the moving average for, you know, a certain support or resistance point, but if this correlation is going against us, then maybe that moving average shouldn't be considered as much, right? So I think that's sort of the risk management exercise here. And um, and we're at a particularly interesting juncture right now for watching the dollar versus risk assets, given where interest rates are and where we are in the economic cycle. So that's one example of, a, of an inverse correlation in this example. That's interesting, isn't it? Because it brings together this idea of uh, some of the fundamental uh, backdrops to, to trading. And I know as, as technical analysts, we, we like to use some fundamentals as well to back up our, our, our charts. Uh, talking there about the, the dollar, the dollar is really interesting, isn't it? Because... We have, as a global society, uh, we trade commodities in, in U.S. dollars. So there's a correlation there as well. How does this play out? Yeah. Yeah. So the dollar versus commodities as, a, as an asset class, and basically commodities you can break down into almost different asset classes, that's a little bit more granular. But what I thought I would do is I would show you one inverse correlation that is working out really well right now, and that is the U.S. dollar. So I'm going to get it right this time. In this case, the U.S. dollar again is uh, is the orange line versus gold. So gold is the is the uh, blue line, and the dollar is the um, orange line. So the dollar topped in October, like we saw in the previous chart, and gold starts to rally, just like equities started to rally. Well, over, even just over the past few days now, what's happening, you can see the dollar started bouncing. That's, again, the orange line. And gold started coming off, right? So, again, as an additional layer of information and maybe even as a primary source of information, maybe using this and then in addition to that, using your favorite overbought, overbought, whatever things and, you know, moving average and things like that. To give us confirmation, because this this inverse correlation again, it's basically the dollar that's driving things, is more powerful than any moving average, than that we can possibly use. So it allows us to quickly either disqualify, or use as even more confirmation 
a simple moving average or other our, our other favorite indicators. What about this idea as well about ways to trade interest rates against some aspects of the of the market? Because uh, all of a sudden we've got interest rates going up and it does twist markets. How should we read through on this rise in rates against other markets that we could trade? Yeah. Well, this is more of a macro trade now. So this is more of a longer term thing in terms of, but it's an, a crucially important uh a correlation or against an inverse correlation in this case to understand. So um, what I did here is I took two asset classes. Again, the orange one is in this case, the NASDAQ 100. And basically what that should be a proxy of is basically, you know, the riskiest part of the equity, equity capital structure, so risky part of stock. So call it high growth uh, and maybe more spec speculative. So that's the orange line. And then the blue line is, is interest rates. In this case, we're using, because we're talking about U.S. equities here, but again, this could be, it's a pretty global uh, analogy. Um, and the blue line is two-year treasury yields. So yield on the U.S. two-year two treasury note. And you can see more or less around the time when interest rates started to go higher, we started to see uh, the equity market start to come off. Wasn't exactly to the date. But it was pretty close. Um, and again, you know, if you think about this sort of more fundamentally, like why would this make sense? Well, if borrowing costs are going up, then the companies that are basically, you know, living off of cheap debt uh, are going to have a more difficult time making money. In fact, it creates a lot of zombie companies. That's a whole other topic. But these are crucially important things because, for example, let's say someone was long equities coming into 2022 and we start to see this correlation really or inverse correlation start to break to break then there's really very little reason to fight those trends as rates go up you're going to get risk assets going lower so it really saves us whether we're traders or longer term portfolio allocators or maybe in our retirement portfolios it saves us from fighting trends and really getting getting our heads handed to ourselves every time uh, we have a shift in interest rates Serge, thanks so much indeed uh, for joining us. Serge Berger from thesteadytrader.com taking a look at correlations.